Hi, uh, we meet today with uh, Raquel Jeter, the gentleman yeah. who is in charge of a, a free chess chat program under the non-governmental organization uh, with a very special name, Childhood Lost. Mm -hmm. so, Rakim, uh, childhood lost. Uh, it seems that um, you have uh, experienced in your life something like that. Uh, as far as I know, you um, you were first went to prison at the age of fifteen, right? Yeah. Could you could you tell us your story? How did this happen? So I did. So I, my first interrupt, in, introduction to the prison system, I, like you said, I was fifteen. I uh, I was you know a, a young adolescent getting into trouble. I, uh, I committed some robberies and I was arrested for it in my neighborhood. Uh, I went to I went to school and like strong armed a couple kids, like you know took their money or whatever. Was arrested for that, carrying weapons on property. So I was I was like the typical Philadelphia kid, just causing trouble, and that got me. To, is you it, know, that's is it a typical typical Philadelphia kid? Uh, in it, it, I mean, in, in my neighborhood, in my neighborhood, that's not that's that people are. That's what we that's what we're out here doing. A lot of us are introduced to the prison system at an early age. So like the youth study centers is filled with, with little little black kids, you know, from the city from the city. So I would say it's typical. All right. But uh Rakim, as far as I know, you did play chess already before uh you got into prison. Normally, you know, people consider that, you know, the chess players they know the the relationship between the cause and consequences. So this somehow didn't work, yes, even if you were the best player, chess player in your neighborhood. Right. So I, I, I did learn how to play. so I learned how to play chess actually um getting in trouble. So I used to uh at, at I think I was in uh I was probably 14. I was going to see the counselors. I, I would get in trouble and they would have me go see the counselor. So I was sitting in the counselor's office and the counselor has a chess board set up in his in his office. And I didn't want to talk to him. So I would just look at the chess board. And one day he said, you want to learn how to play chess? How about we just play chess and, as opposed to talking? So he taught me the pieces. He taught me how everything moves. I learned it like like real fast. And then I just somehow I just started really playing. It, it just became one of my favorite games to play. So I would play in the neighborhood, um, play wherever we went, actually. Like about... If I went anywhere, I was I, I, I was fine with going with going anywhere as long as I could take my chess for it. Rakim, you are like a perfect uh, character for the second series of Netflix, like uh, the Queen's Gambit, uh, Beth, and you are the you know the male, <laughs> the King's yeah, Gambit. Yes, I know that you call your kids, your youth that uh, joined the um, uh, chess uh, chat program, the kings and the queens. Is it something that motivates them? Yes. Yeah. So. I think I think they're uh they're motivated by just understanding my story and understanding that's why I like the target our our target demographic is uh at risk youth right so I think they're motivated understanding my story and knowing that I came from a place just like them and now I I came back to be able to assist them and tell them some of the pitfalls so yes I think that's what motiv that's what motivates them it's not only about chess that you teach them it's also your personal st story yes that uh, correct that correct. inspires them. Yeah, I like to I like to say chess is just the vehicle that I use, right? I, I really don't care whether or not they like the game of chess. I just want them to understand the tools that you can be that can be sharpened by learning the game of chess. So a lot of times I'll get in these facilities and the and the, and the youngest they don't want to talk, they don't want to play chess. They they think chess is for nerds and you know it's uncool, but it's it's like forced. It's they they're they're forced to be be here. They forced to do the program. So I had to find little ways to get them to engage. And I use, you know, terminology that they're familiar with. I use references that they're familiar with. I, I, I manage a, a, rap, a rapper. So I try to use, like, the entertainment to get them engaged. And all, and all through chess, you know, it all comes back to chess at some point. I'm always looking for a chess analogy to bring it back to the board. Mm. Raquel, now you work with the youth, with the kids. But I understand that when you first got to prison, it was... You who actually taught chess to all your uh, uh, prison inmates or your or your colleagues there, yes? You spread the virus absolutely. In, in the prison. Absolutely. absolutely. I think, um, so during, during one, of my, one of my sentences, uh, that's where I first got the love for teaching chess, right? Having to teach my cellies. I, 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 we would be locked down all day, all day and my cellie doesn't know how to play chess. So naturally, I want to play chess. So I'm, you know what? I'm going to teach you how to play chess so that we can play. And as I'm teaching them, they're getting better, you know, and we have to find, I'm having to find creative ways to make it 
uh, you know, competitive. So I'm, we have this set that's like, I got to beat you 10 in a row for it to count as one win for me. And then, you know, then it, it naturally expanded outside of my celly and I started to teach in a day room. Whoever won the last place, I'm going to teach y'all. Teach five people at a time, different stuff like that. So that's where I, I actually got the love for teaching chess at. I, I, I developed that in prison. How much time does it take uh, uh, for you to teach somebody chess? And does it differ if you talk about the, a youth, a kid, uh, a youngster coming from a park or a, a, a prison mate? <laughs> so, so, so what I learned is, so what I learned is, so I'll, I'll, I'll explain it to them. I, I, let them, I, 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 I normally teach it by letting, having them mimic the moves that I make, right? So I'll take a, I'll take a rook. And I'll just say, I'm not going to say a word. I'm just going to show you how it moves. You mimic my moves, right? So we'll do that for each piece. And I'll ask them at the end of it, how does this piece move? How does that piece move? So that normally, I can probably get through that in probably 15 or 20 minutes, right? But then I learn when we start to play the game, they may forget how pieces move. So then we just, so I like to just jump right in it and just correct them as they go along and help them out. I feel like a good 45-minute session, you can you can fully have somebody grasp how the pieces move. And then we move into the different strategies and the opening strategies and stuff like that. Okay. You, it takes 45 minutes for you to teach somebody to play chess. I so would say, how, I would say, how much, how much time does it take for chess to teach the essential things to a person playing it? That's an excellent question. That's, that's a lifetime. It takes a lifetime to learn all of those things from all of the things that chess can give you. A lifetime. I still haven't learned them all. I still, I figure, I learn stuff all the time in chess. New, new ways that it applies. So that's a lifetime. It's like you, you want to take a lifetime to figure that out. That's why I love the game. It's, it has infinite. It offers infinite possibility. Mm. How, what is your chess life besides the fact that you teach the youngsters? And I would be actually happy if you tell a little more about your chess, uh, uh, chess for youth uh, or chess chat program, so that the, right. the audience uh, would 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 know uh, how great is the work you you do. But afterwards, tell me also what is your chess life besides that? Do you play some chess tournaments? Do you train yourself I, as well? I do, I do. So I do play in tournaments, um, and I noticed. I know, when I when I started teaching, like really taking it serious and um, you know actively looking for places to teach at, once I really started getting serious at teaching, my chess game went down. I noticed that I started to lose in, at more and more tournaments. So I'm, I'm not as competitive at tournament play as I would like. So I, I'm rated about uh, 1,800 or somewhere around there at this point. Um, I do play in tournaments, but I also play on the street. So normally what I know is, on the streets, and I play on a clock. I, I love bullet chess. That's my game. I, I, I want to play bullet. I want to play speed. I don't like the long Maybe games. That's three minutes? One minute? What is your bullet? One, one minute. On, one on minute the game? game. On, <laughs> on, on the game? Listen, on the computer, one minute. In person, I'll play two or three minutes. Two or three. I cannot do that. I mean, I never play one minute on computer. I, I think I can, I'm not that fast in moving the mouse. <laughs> no, I don't do... I, I use my iPad. I use my iPad. It just it offers me the most, you know, the fastest. So I, I or on my phone. I also play on my phone the one minute on uh, the bullet chest. But in person, I can I can get away with a, a playing a good game in two or three minutes, two minutes or three minutes. And I play for money. That's what I play for money. Okay. What's your income from chess? <laughs> when you play in money? Yeah. No, I play. I play for money. I mean, I mean, I, you know, I, I went out. I, I lo I've lost thousands. I've won thousands playing for money. I mean, it's. Wow. I'm a competitive person, so. The only time I was I was playing uh, for money, I mean, you know, on the stakes, it was when right. I was eight years old and my coach uh, first took me to the park here in Riga, where, you know, uh, that's also a place where the uh, elderly uh, gentlemen come and play um, chess for money. And he put some 50 cents probably on a game. <laughs> and that was the most competitive game in my life, probably. <laughs> As you know, we were playing against this gentleman, and when he started losing, he started to smoke. And you know, and I didn't like the smoke, and I was starting coughing. And I was like, mm, oh. a little girl, have you got tuberculosis? <laughs> Yeah, but then I, wow. when, when, I, when I won the game, they called me the, the, the little polgar. So that was a strong compliment for me. <laughs> yeah. Do, I, you, love, you know? I love Susan Polgar. That was my favorite book to read. And you know, you know why I loved it so much? And I, 
actually have that here. It's my favorite book. The reason why I love this book is in prison is because this is. It's I very can, sick. I, it's very it's sick. Very you, can, you when you have a lot of time, you you need yeah, the sick books. <laughs> this books. is my favorite book. This is my favorite book, and I had to buy. I bought. I probably bought this probably about three or four times. Mm. This book right here. Folders. Um. Um. Actually, not Susan. Uh, her sister. Folger. But yeah, I love that. And tell me, who are your chess, uh, your authorities in chess? Who are your favorite chess players? Oh, uh, of course, Nakamura, um, Magnus Carlsen. I love Magnus. Of course, the top players. But I'll say, um, I have, I, uh, who was, who, uh, it was some guy, I think, I can't, I forget his name. Before he became a grandmaster a few years ago, we went out to dinner in Philly. And then I realized that, you know, he told me that he was working on norms. I didn't even know him. I, I know his name now. I can't think of his name. Um, but he's a grandmaster. He got, you know, he got his norms and all that. He's one of my, I like to, uh, Sam Shanklin. Sam Shanklin. I love Sam Shanklin's game too. All right. <laughs> all right. And the ladies? Polgar sisters? Yeah, the Polgar sisters, absolutely. That's my favorite. I mean, and there's this, there's this other female out of New York, Nadia. She's not a grandmaster or anything, so you may not know her, but Nadia, I love her. I love her game. Mm. And uh, you know that there, there's going to be the World Championship match in Dubai in November, December this year. So uh, uh, Carlson would play against uh, Janne Pomnesche. So your fingers would be crossed for Carlson, I guess. Yes. <laughs> I just want to see a competitive game. And I love to see the go over the games afterwards and try to figure out, like, what was they thinking here? I love to play those puzzles where you have to figure out their moves, why they were making the moves and what the moves made. I love that it's in the chess.com magazine or chess uh, life magazine. So would you say that uh, um, it is uh, uh, possible to see the character of a chess player uh, following his or her game? So that chess somehow replicates the nature of the chess player? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, what's the guy who always draws? Anish? I, uh, uh, what's his name? He Giri? always draws. What, what did you say? Anish Giri? Yes. He always gets the draws, but he has like a timid personality. It seems like a lot of in Nakamura, he's he's like a he's like a more uh, tiger type of play, and that comes out on the board. A lot of people's personalities does play out in their game. Hmm. I try to I try to I try me personally I try to avoid that because uh, I like to it's like poker. Chess is chess. You know, it has some uh, comparisons to poker, where people you know you try to not to have your poker face on. So I try not to play how my opponent think I'm, thinks I'm going to play. I, I Actually, I try to play the board, but, you know, people come in with a preconceived notion that you're going to be an aggressive player, and I try not to be aggressive in those situations. I guess uh, you have to also, you know, be a bit different when you when you teach to somebody. I mean, you can be a lion or a tiger when you play yourself, but especially when you when you work with these kids, with, the, with this youth uh, um, that you attract to your chess program, uh, you are the teacher, right? So, uh, what are those things that you want them to to learn from you from chess? Uh, as I can imagine that you not only play, you not only train them chess. You probably are like a psychotherapist, or I don't know, for somebody probably a second father at home. Absolutely. So one of the things that they see, and they also see me, they see it in my character through the other through the other people is is patience. They see me exercising patience where somebody might not be picking up on something, right? I don't get frustrated. Or where somebody doesn't want to play chess. Like I said, a lot of times it's mandatory. It's mandated. So they see me exercising patience and not losing my cool. So I'm able to I'm able to demonstrate that outside of chess, and now that gives me credibility and that gives me an opportunity to have their ear, right? So I talk about, I talk about the streets a lot to them because I know that resonates with them, right? So that, that builds that trust. So now in, in talking about chess, I can show them how you just, this just helps you make, helps you work on making the right decision. That's the, one of the biggest things I, I, I harp on when I'm dealing with the youth. I'm dealing on, this is just an exercise for you to continuously exercise your brain. Make sure you're making the right decision, being able to come up with a decision at a, you know, at a, at a quick, a quick clip or having a process, having a decision making process is like one of the most things that I, I talk about. Mm -hmm. You've been uh, involved in this program since 2015, so it's six years approximately. Do you already uh, have some um, some 
bright examples how chess has transformed the lives of these uh, young kids. I so I wouldn't say I wouldn't say transform because I don't want to give I don't want to give chess all the credit for you know the positive things that happen in their life. I just tell, I just say for all of our youth that actually are in the program and they youth not even just our program just chess in general. For the youth that are participating in, in chess programs, you see you see the benefits. You see how they don't most times. I was not all the time. You know, in, in the streets of Philadelphia, because during we, right now we're having a very 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 terrible pandemic, and I'm not talking about coronavirus. I'm talking about violence. We're having a violent, a very very violent pandemic happening in the streets of Philadelphia. But um, when I see a lot of my a lot of my students, and I tap back in with them. I, I see different ways that they're saying how chess has helped them change, make decisions, or they're not really doing what their friends are doing and stuff like that. So that's those are, those little small wins is where is is what I like to focus on in chess because it helps you to just get through your adolescence and not making these mistakes that's going to cost you the rest of your life, one way or the other, right? And then when you get to a teenager, that that you start to build on those decision making. Now they're starting to go to college, or now they're you know they're they they have they started a career they opened the business stuff like that that's where you start to see the improve you start to see where they made decisions that are beneficial to their life so I don't like to just give it all the um, all the credit to chess but it's it's the building block on a lot of the success that we see in our youth. Oh, a provocative question came into my mind. Um, when you teach them playing chess, do you allow them to take a move back? Uh, if they're playing me. If they're only if they're playing me, so I, uh, if 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 it's not a lot of students, I may go around and play a lot of them, or you know whoever's there, I'll play a lot of them, and I'll allow them to take moves uh, against me, but not against each other. Mm -hmm. I don't allow them to take moves back. I, I, what I do is, and we do we we all do this after the game, after everybody's done their games, we sit there and break down the game together as a group. So now we can offer each other um, constructive criticism, right? That's a part of life. So I teach them that. You have to be you have to be receptive of people criticizing your move, and we're going to explain why that move was wrong. So that's part of the lesson. That's part of the teaching is make a mistake because it helps everybody else learn from the mistake you may have made. So no, they can't take the moves back. So <laughs> giving back the move, it's not about giving the second chance. If you want to give the second chance, uh, the person has to understand the mistake uh, that has been made, and a new game had, had, can be started, right? <laughs> The second chance. The second chance is the next game. You the get the second game. chance to make and to learn from the mistake. If if you uh, if you had a possibility to review your life, your <laughs> big chess game, was there any move uh, that you would be willing to take back? If your coach oh, allow. <laughs> no, it's not a move. It's an action. So in my very first tournament, right when I found chess, um, like competitive chess, and when I found um, the U.S. Uh, however you say, what's, what's the yes, the, the chess acronyms. Whenever I found competitive chess, the first time I found it, I was in a tournament, right? And it was the uh, under, under, under night, it was open. I, I was in the open section, right? Now, I already knew how to play chess, but I never played it competitively. So I wanted to see where I stacked up at against other rated players, people that played. So I came in and I'm playing a 1900 player and I'm winning on the board. I'm looking like I'm beating this guy. So I'm just so confident and so cocky that I just, I'm watching the board. I let seven minutes run off my clock. I let seven minutes run off my clock. So that, I would love to be able to take that back, to be able to not be cop cocky and confident like that and just pay attention and keep hitting the clock, man, because I lost seven minutes. And I, I looked up and I had two minutes left on the clock and I lost the game on time. My very first game against a 1900 player, I could have had a win. So, Once yeah, again, a lesson, a lesson was learned. <laughs> yeah, a lesson was learned. A lesson was learned. It was the uh, World Open. It was a warm up for the World Open, I believe. You are father of an 11 year uh, old or young boy, right? Yes, I have a son and a daughter, a 11 year old and a five year old daughter. All oh, right, I know, I knew, I know about your 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 boy because uh, he is helping you in the chess training, right? Correct. I'm here. So that's my that's my assistant coach. He's actually been assisting me since he was about five years old. So I always uh, one of the one of the things that he always likes to point out whenever we tell people that he teaches with me, he say I don't like to play that much. I just like to teach. 
he does have input. So when he's listening to stuff I'm saying, he will be able to piggyback and say, oh, yeah, that makes sense. It's like this thing you did that where if you would exercise a little more patience, you wouldn't have got that mad. Stuff like that. He'll do something like that. So he, he, approves, that. he approves the things the father <laughs> said. <laughs> His approval. He didn't call me out. He called me out when I'm being a hypocrite. He didn't call me out if he said, hey, you said you like your patience and you teach patience, but you lose patience all the time. He'll do stuff like that. So, yeah, uh, that's sit, where it's... Sit on you know, your hands. <laughs> sit on your hands. <laughs> Yeah. yeah uh, uh, going back to the to the chess and and prison, I also know when, uh, that uh, when you were in prison, you also uh, played the correspondence tournament, and it was said you you told you you were you were telling that uh, you uh, launched five games in parallel so that to make sure that every day you would uh, receive a letter, right? Absolutely. So cor correspondence chess is like my favorite, not favorite. That was like my lifeline in, chess, in, in, in prison because regardless of anything's happening, whatever's going on in the world, I would always receive the mail from the outside. And even though it's just a simple move, it's just, you know, they send a, uh, I, and it's terrible that I don't have, I don't have my, uh, my correspondence book on me. I normally have it in the car with me. But so I have a little correspondence book that keeps track of all the games, right? Um, so every game is on its own little board on my little correspondence book. You know what I'm talking about? You know the correspondence yeah, book? Yeah, of course, of course. I have uh, also been playing uh, the correspondence chess when I was a kid. <laughs> oh, wow, wow, that's great. I, I, I've never met anybody else that did it. I didn't even know it existed. One day my mom just said, you know, there's a way they got this thing called correspondence chess where you, you can play people. And I'm like, yeah, sign me up for that. So she signed me up. And next thing I know, I was receiving moves in the mail. And I was able to send moves back out. And that was another way for me to teach um, some of myself, you know, some of myself or other people in the prison. They wonder, like, what are these moves you always getting into jail? How you get called for jail um, mail every single day? And, uh, you know, that sparks a conversation. So correspondence, and, and like I said, it's always given me something to look forward to. That's what it did. Every single day I'm looking forward to, for a move. Just imagine that. You made a move you're at, a, at, at a critical point in the game, and I'm wondering what, what is he going to do? Is he going to make a mistake or is he going to do that? One thing about correspondence, you don't get blundered. You don't get blunders as much. People do not blunder their pieces. Did you use the advice of your colleagues in your games? Absolutely. Absolutely. We we talk we talk about a move. I, so I had so when I was at Forest, right? I had my friend, he was better than me actually. So it so Most they were your processing I, machine, your computer, right? <laughs> absolutely. I was just about to say that. I was just about to say that. It was only one prison that I was able to do that at, because every other prison I was always the best. So I couldn't get help on, like, a move. I couldn't get their ideas, their thoughts. But when I was at Forest, right, it was two people that was probably that was better than me. One guy named was Rich, one, one guy named was Dick. So when I would get my move, sometimes we would go over them. Like, let's look at this move right quick. And we would discuss it, and he'd give me his thoughts, and I'd come up with the best move. But, yes, I definitely use some of my uh, cellies as a, as a sounding board. Are you still in contact with them, with your chess masters? Absolutely. Hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So my friend Dink, um, he, was, he was actually incarcerated for 28 years. He just came home. So, we, you know, uh, I play, I've got to play with him. You know, he's moved on and, and, and progressing in life. Uh, the other guy, Rich. I was, I'm not in contact with him now. He got released. He actually had life, but he got released, and I lost contact with him. But we used to play. We played correspondence chess. And you know that we are now organizing the first intercontinental online chess championship for prisoners in, uh, I sent, in October? I, I sent that to a couple people. Yeah, I'm definitely interested in, in, in building a team. I know a, a bunch of guys in the, federal, in, in, uh, in the federal prison. They actually sent me mail. They just sent me a letter talking about how good they are and how chess is, you know, chess is helping them do their bid. So I'm I'm in, I'm in constant contact with guys that that are. I can imagine. I don't know, but I can imagine that uh, those inmates they are now looking forward to participating in this tournament the same way that you were uh, looking forward to receive your uh, letter yep. coming in with a with the next move of your correspondence games. So so something to expect, something to strive for, something to that that motivates you strongly. No. Yeah, absolutely. Something to look forward to. It just gives them something to feel proud of and something to be competitive about. So that's a it's a great thing. I mean, they have other they have other competitions. So it's only it only makes sense that chess will be one of the things that is on a large scale supported. 
what would you say uh, to those who uh, state that life is too short to, to play chess? Life is too short to play chess. Well, they may be playing, they may not be playing on the clock. <laughs> try a try a one minute bullet game yes <laughs> i can get i can get, get 10 bullet games in in 10 minutes there's no way life is too short for that uh, i can each, always make each, each 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 game of a chest is uh is like a, a whole life so you can have several lives <laughs> several, exactly. in one day <laughs> what i like to say about chess It's, you can re keep replaying it over and over. That's like life. It's like giving you, well, it's not like life, but life, you only get one. But chess, it gives you the opportunity to keep hitting reset to, and make, you know, make improvements. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah. That was Rakim Jeter, my very passionate, very um, inspirational partner of today's discussion. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Thank you for having me. Um, you can follow my Instagram page at Chess in a Minute. That's my personal chess page. It's all Chess in a Minute, all one word. I started that page because I Instagram allowed you one minute, and I wanted to be able to teach in a minute. So my first 50 posts are teaching the game from beginning to end, beginning to end, and then I use my tactics all uh, in, in one minute. I'm looking forward to to, <laughs> to getting acquainted to the contents. I mean, and someday I'll meet you and you'll teach me chess in a minute. <laughs> Thank you Thank very you. much.